Breathing is something we often take for granted. It's an automatic process vital to life. But sometimes, breathing becomes difficult. This can happen for various reasons, from illness to injury. When normal breathing is compromised, a tracheostomy might be necessary. A tracheostomy is a medical procedure. It creates an opening in the windpipe, also known as the trachea. This opening allows air to bypass any blockages higher in the respiratory system. A small tube, called a tracheostomy tube, is inserted into the opening. This tube helps with breathing. Think of it as a detour for air. When the usual route is blocked, the tracheostomy provides an alternate path. This ensures the lungs receive the oxygen they need. The tracheostomy tube becomes a lifeline, allowing patients to breathe and speak. There are several situations where a tracheostomy might be necessary. One common reason is airway obstruction. This happens when something blocks the trachea, making it difficult or impossible to breathe. The blockage could be caused by a foreign object lodged in the throat, severe swelling in the mouth or throat, tumors pressing on the airway, or facial trauma that damages the trachea. Another common reason is respiratory failure. This occurs when the lungs can't provide enough oxygen to the body. This can be caused by lung diseases like COPD or pneumonia, neurological conditions that affect breathing muscles, or severe infections that impact lung function. Sometimes, a tracheostomy is needed after surgery. This is common after complex head and neck surgeries. It protects the airway while the patient recovers. In these cases, the tracheostomy might be temporary. Tracheostomies can be either temporary or permanent. The type used depends on the underlying medical condition. Temporary tracheostomies are often used as a short-term solution. They help patients breathe while they recover from an illness, injury, or surgery. Once the patient's condition improves, the tracheostomy tube can be removed. The opening in the trachea will then heal naturally. Permanent tracheostomies, on the other hand, are meant to be long-term solutions. They are used when the underlying condition causing breathing difficulties is unlikely to improve. Patients with permanent tracheostomies require ongoing care and management of their airway. It's important to remember that both temporary and permanent tracheostomies are life-saving procedures. They provide a vital airway when normal breathing is compromised. There are two main techniques for performing a tracheostomy, surgical and percutaneous. The choice of technique depends on various factors, including the patient's anatomy and overall health. Surgical tracheostomy is a more traditional approach. It's performed in an operating room under general anesthesia. The surgeon makes an incision in the neck to access the trachea. They then create an opening and insert the tracheostomy tube. Percutaneous tracheostomy is a less invasive technique. It can be performed at the bedside using local anesthesia and sedation. A needle is inserted through the skin and into the trachea. This creates a track for the tracheostomy tube to be inserted. Percutaneous tracheostomy generally has a faster recovery time and fewer complications. However, surgical tracheostomy might be a safer option for patients with complex anatomy or certain medical conditions. Section 5. Finding the right fit, high versus low tracheostomies. When performing a tracheostomy, the surgeon must decide on the placement of the tracheostomy tube. This can be either high or low in the trachea. A high tracheostomy is placed higher up on the trachea, closer to the vocal cords. This placement is generally avoided as it carries a higher risk of complications. These include damage to the vocal cords, difficulty with breathing and swallowing, and an increased risk of infection. A low tracheostomy, on the other hand, is placed lower down on the trachea, closer to the lungs. This placement is preferred as it is generally safer and easier to manage. It also allows for easier speaking and swallowing. The choice between a high and low tracheostomy depends on the patient's specific anatomy and the reason for the tracheostomy. Section 6. The Daily Ritual Cleaning and Caring for Your Tracheostomy Living with a tracheostomy requires adjustments to daily life. One crucial aspect is meticulous care of the tracheostomy tube and surrounding skin. This includes regular cleaning and inspection to prevent complications. Cleaning the tracheostomy tube is essential to prevent mucus buildup and potential blockages. This involves 1. Gathering supplies, sterile water or saline solution, cotton swabs, gauze pads, clean gloves. 2. Washing hands thoroughly with soap and water. 3. Putting on clean gloves. 4. Carefully removing the inner cannula of the tracheostomy tube. 5. Cleaning the inner cannula with sterile water or saline solution and a brush. 
6. Rinsing the inner cannula thoroughly and drying it with a clean gauze pad. 7. Reinserting the inner cannula into the tracheostomy tube and locking it in place. In addition to cleaning, the skin around the tracheostomy stoma, or opening, needs attention. This involves gently cleaning the area with soap and water, then patting it dry. Applying a clean dressing helps prevent irritation and infection. Regularly inspecting the tracheostomy tube and the skin around the stoma is crucial. Look for any signs of redness, swelling, discharge, or irritation. Report any concerns to your healthcare provider immediately. Section 7. Staying Calm in a Crisis Managing Tracheostomy Emergencies While tracheostomies are generally safe, emergencies can happen. It's crucial to know how to react swiftly and calmly to prevent serious complications. One common emergency is tracheostomy tube dislodgement. This can happen accidentally, especially in the first few weeks after the procedure. If the tube becomes dislodged, 1. Stay calm and try to reassure the patient. 2. If the tube is partially dislodged, try to keep it in place. 3. If the tube has come out completely, try to insert a spare tracheostomy tube, if available. 4. If you cannot reinsert the tube, cover the stoma with a sterile dressing and apply gentle pressure. 5. Call for emergency medical help immediately. Another emergency is tracheostomy tube blockage. This can occur due to mucus plugs or foreign objects. Signs of blockage include difficulty breathing, noisy breathing, and blue discoloration of the skin, known as cyanosis. If you suspect a blockage, 1. Stay calm and try to reassure the patient. 2. Attempt to clear the blockage by suctioning the tracheostomy tube. 3. If suctioning doesn't work, remove the inner cannula and clean it thoroughly. 4. If the blockage persists, call for emergency medical help immediately. Section 8. Keeping infections at bay hygiene is key. Tracheostomy patients are at an increased risk of respiratory infections. This is because the tracheostomy tube bypasses the body's natural defense mechanisms in the nose and throat. Maintaining good hygiene is crucial to prevent potentially life-threatening infections. Hand washing is the single most important step. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before and after touching the tracheostomy tube, cleaning the stoma, or handling any related supplies. Other hygiene measures include keeping the tracheostomy tube and surrounding skin clean and dry, changing dressings regularly, avoiding contact with sick people, and getting vaccinated against respiratory infections like influenza and pneumonia. If you notice any signs of infection, such as redness, swelling, pus, or fever, contact your healthcare provider immediately. Early treatment is essential to prevent the infection from spreading. Section 9. Knowledge is power empowering patients and families. Living with a tracheostomy can be challenging, both for patients and their families. Education is key to ensuring safe and effective care at home. Patients and families need to learn about the anatomy and physiology of the respiratory system, the purpose and function of the tracheostomy tube, daily care routines including cleaning and suctioning, how to recognize and manage potential complications, emergency procedures in case of dislodgement or blockage, and communication techniques for patients who have difficulty speaking. This education should be provided by qualified healthcare professionals, such as respiratory therapists, nurses, and speech-language pathologists. It should be tailored to the individual patient's needs and learning style. Empowering patients and their families with knowledge and skills fosters independence and improves their quality of life. It also gives them the confidence to manage their tracheostomy effectively and safely.